Hi guys, my name is Vanessa Smedley and I'm a painter. Today we're going to paint this little study right here of some water plants. I believe that's water lilies and maybe water hyacinth, something like that, but they are from my mom's backyard. She's got a nice little pond there that she has, she's got a goldfish in it. And I mean, freaking things getting like that long. Okay. Like it's actually probably about like that long. It's huge. But anyways, she's got her little pond back there and um, I was there a week or so ago and just saw all the light coming through the leaves on the top of the things and just thought it was an interesting scene. It's extremely detailed. I may or may not do a real painting of it someday, but I just thought I would do like a nice little study of it in gouache. So let's do this. Here are the materials for today. Go ahead and pause and screenshot or they're listed in the description for you. And no, those sweet stickers do not come with that sketchbook. Sorry about that. Starting out with two pools of sap green here, and I'm going to mix cadmium yellow into one of them, and then ultramarine blue and Payne's gray into the other one. Then I start out with the yellow green mix, and I run that down until I hit the little pond area itself and then I add some of my other darker green into the top area for the shadow. Then I add some burnt umber for some of the shadow area behind the plants. You'll notice that I'm just painting right over my drawing and that is because gouache is not as transparent as watercolor. So I can actually come back in over the top of all of that color and even paint light colors over it. It is glorious. I've let all of that dry now and I'm coming back in with my dark green and I'm using kind of a dry brush technique over the top in the shadowy areas here. Now I'm using my dark green and I'm going to begin to fill in some of the darker leaves here. But then I begin to realize I cannot really see my drawing because this gouache is so opaque. I've covered it up entirely. Now I've, I went back and redrew it dark enough to where I could see it and now I'm beginning to fill in the darker leaves again. Now this whole area is just a mass of leaves and stems and all of that kind of stuff and I don't really want to sit there and draw and paint every single one of them. So in some of the larger areas I've filled that in with a nice medium green and I will come back in and paint over the top of that some lighter areas, some darker areas and that'll fill it in. But I'm going to blag it a little bit or in other words um, make it up just a little bit. Now I've mixed up kind of a medium green color and I'm coming back in and filling in um, some of the medium tones in all of these leaves. Now I've mixed more cadmium yellow into my yellowest of the greens and I'm coming back in and filling in some of the, the leaves that have the light showing through them right now.
fun fact about water lilies is that there are lots of different varieties of water lilies, but the largest one is actually called, wait for it, the giant water lily. Imagine that. But the cool thing about this water lily is it can grow to the size of three to six feet per lily pad and can support 66 pounds worth of weight. So technically that means that my daughter could go and sit on one like a little froggy. Only I'm not gonna tell her she can do that because she totally and utterly would. Now I decided that the background needed to be darker in order to make these um, plants stand out more in the front. So I've come back in with um, my darker mix here and I'm painting around all of that, trying to not cover up what I've already painted before, but it is very difficult. So I'm doing all that, but then after it dries, I realize it dried intensely too dark because I'm not used to the color shift that happens with gouache. So I'm trying to add in a little bit of white here to tone that back down, but I really just think it's gonna be too dark again. I added some white into my light green color and I'm attempting to make the leaves stand out even more. I don't think that's quite successful, so I'm actually gonna come back in with more yellow and start to add that. I know that the color of, in the photo is really not this yellow, but I really just want to emphasize the fact that the sunlight is coming through these leaves, so I'm just gonna yellow it up, you know? I'd say whatever needs to be done here to make get the contrast that I want. Now that the background has dried, I can see that I was correct in the fact that it is too dark. So I've added some white and I am coming back in and trying to lighten up the background just a tad. And then we make yet another pass on the brightest areas here to try to make them stand out even more. It's time to forge onward on the bottom half of this painting. So I've got one of my dark mixes here and I am adding in all of the lily pads. And then I use Payne's Gray to add in some shadows in between the lily pads. I'm also mixing in some white into the wet paint as I go in order to provide some definition. It's time for a fun fact about water lilies. Basically because they sit on the surface of the water they provide shade to other organisms underneath them, and they keep the water cooler. Not like a water cooler, but like the temperature of the water cooler. Anyways, they also provide shelter for little fish from predatory birds, so they're out there saving the lives of little fishies everywhere. Which I'm pretty sure my mom's little goldfish that lives in her little pond vastly appreciates. Cause she lives in the country and there's no telling what kind of predatory birds would be after his little tail. And now I've actually mixed up a color where I've used my dark green and then added some white to it for all of the areas that are in the light. This is basically just shine from the sun. Now 
now mixing some ultramarine blue in with some white and we're going to use this for the watercolor. Towards the bottom we add in more ultramarine because it gets much darker at the bottom here. Now I'm taking Payne's Gray and I'm filling in the shadows and the details in the back. And really I'm just kind of making it up as I go along because I am certainly not going to fill in every little stem or every little leaf or whatever it is that's there. I'm really just creating a sense of depth here by adding in the darkest shadows. Continuing to use Payne's Gray to darken in some things to add some details. And there's, you know, just the reflections on the water and things like that. And this, all this bubbly area here, we're just baking that in with shadows. Gotta fix the gradient on the water, it's been bugging me. So I mix up an in-between color and smooth that out just a little, tiny little bit. And then glazing some white over these to add in more shine on the leaves. I'm mixing burnt umber and paints gray in a darker color and then adding in some white for a lighter color. We're going to use that for the rocks. I'm going to start out with a light coat of the light color and then come back in with the darker color for the shadows and then I'm going to come back in with paints gray for the darkest of the shadows. On top of that I'm going to use a credit card to scrape into the wet paint and create a nice texture. I still do not have enough contrast with these sunlit leaves, so I'm coming back in with just straight lemon yellow. And I'm going to glaze that over the top of this and maybe finally get enough contrast. I'm going to use my dark green here just to make some lines from cast shadows on the top of all the lily pads. Coming back in with some Payne's Gray under the rocks and in the darkest areas of the leaves. Just adding some cast shadows and some reflections. Now I'm mixing ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and white, and we're going to use this for these hyacinth flowers at the top. So we're going to start out with a nice light color of it, then I'm going to mix darker and darker um, mixes of it and put that inside the middle part of each flower. In order to get that very backlit look, I'm actually now using a 0.7 millimeter Posca pen in white. And I'm just gonna add little details here and there to have the extreme reflection of the sun. I added some of that down in the lily pads as well and then used a, um, a wet brush to kind of blend it in together. I don't know that I would recommend that. I don't know that it was the most successful thing, but there it is. And here's the final sketch. Um, that was really just an intense lot of detail. I'm not sure that I'm really gonna go ahead and do a final painting of this, but it was definitely a learning experience. I'm gonna chalk it up as one of those. And that's what sketches are for anyway, right? And there you have it. A lovely little scene from my mom's backyard in an undisclosed Oklahoma town. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff because that's how this channel gets to grow. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in two weeks.